Hello and welcome to our Thought for the Day for Tuesday the 19th of July. I'm recording this the day before. It's pretty warm now, but I think today is going to be, this day today, Tuesday, is going to be even hotter. So I'll try and do this quickly and get back in the, uh, in the shade in the house. So welcome. My name is Steve Feist and I'm part of the Benefits team. Our reading today is from 1 Samuel and this is about Hannah and her long-for child Samuel. Now Hannah is one of the two wives of Ephraim. She was Ephraim's favourite, despite her womb being closed by the Lord. And he, and he gave her, and, and Ephraim loved her, and he gave her double the portion when he, of meat when he sacrificed to the Lord. But Hannah could not eat it, and she would always weep, tears of sadness and frustration at her inability to bear a child. So Hannah visited Eli the priest and prayed fervently that the Lord, that if the Lord granted her wish for a child, that she would give him her son to the Lord for all the days of his life. The Lord answered her prayer and she named him Samuel, which in Hebrew sounds like heard by God. So here's our reading. It's from 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 21 to chapter 2 verse 11. When her husband Elkanah went up with his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanah told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah for flour, and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord there. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is, is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and he has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the Lord of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven the Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy ministered before the Lord under the priest Eli. I find this passage of scripture quite astonishing. Bridget and I really struggled to have children, but our prayers were answered by the arrival of our beautiful Lydia. So I can understand the longing Hannah felt for a child. But in Hannah's prayers, she vows to give her son over to the service of the Lord once he is weaned, which would have been when he was about three years old. Can you imagine this sacrifice? She gave up what she most wanted, her son. When she does this, she does this with the understanding that she was not really giving him up because he was a gift from God and she was simply returning that gift to God by dedicating the life of her son to his service. Hannah's prayer of thanks is wonderful. She praises God not just for his answer to her prayer for a son, but she also shows her confidence in God's, in that his hand is on her life. 
and when Mary, Jesus' mother, gives her wonderful song of praise, the Magnificat, at her being chosen by God, she models her prayer on this prayer of Hannah's. So what about us? Do we share the same confidence as Hannah and Mary? Do we accept God's ultimate control over all of our lives, everything in our lives? Do we thank him for the blessings he has provided us? Or do we devote ourselves and our lives to achievements, causes or possessions? I know I want to be more like Hannah. I want to live my life and uh, knowing that God is solid as a rock, he is my foundation. And to always accept and never forget that he knows about everything I do. I want to remember that he is a sovereign over all the affairs of all the peoples of the earth and that everything I do should be for him. Hannah's example for us all is to remember that God is always in control, that we are in his control. Then that puts everything into the right perspective. It puts it into God's perspective. Have a great day. Stay nice and cool.